Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Puzzle Agent, where we've made it to this diner. We're going to be talking to the sheriff in just a minute. I've just seen some gum here, so we're going to collect that. Uh, and I've been told apparently there's two sets of puzzles in this game. The ones that are story-based, like I assume one here might be. Um, and there's also a load of optional puzzles, which you get by talking to other people. So I'm going to try and pick as many of those up as I can and do them. Um, given that it's a blind playthrough, I might miss some here and there. But we're going to do our best to, to do all of them. Um, looks like we talk to this guy. Well, these guys and this guy here. So let's just Hello, start. Hello, gentlemen. Yeah. A bit early for a lunch break, isn't it? Until the Eraser Factory opens again, Daryl and I have nowhere else to go. Huh. Yeah, me and Daryl got nowhere else to go. Oh, that's great. Then you don't mind if I ask you a few questions? Yeah, yeah. As soon as I get these bugs back in place. What? Why do you have bugs in a bugs. diner? You gonna help or not? Daryl's famous insect collection has gone AWOL. Box them back up by stringing lines between adjoining points, keeping these rules in mind. Uh, which rules? Box them back up by stringing lines between keeping these rules in mind, and then there's no rules. Uh, can we. Oh well. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Enclose all the bugs using the fewest number of lines to draw a box possible. A box can be any size, but it must be four sided. Bugs of the same kind can share a box. Each green grass grazer needs three squares of territory. Oh my god. Um, including the square it's on. So greens need three. We could box like those three together, I suppose. Each pink needs two, including the square it's on. Oh, okay. So no, we couldn't do that. Unless, like, these two are empty. Alright. Here we go, then. Um, so... Oh, we can click the rules. Okay, so... Fine. So let's just look at the rules again. So the greens need three squares of territory including the square so they need basically like two others that one needs one other fine so uh how do we uh that's how we draw okay fine now are these guys so if we like do that for instance then that's enough for him right so that should be fine uh, if we do this, that should be enough for him. Now, but that guy won't be able to go in there, will he? How do we, how do we undo a line? Okay, we just drag back over it. So, for instance, we could go like that, I assume. Then this guy could have these t two. Um, now, this guy's going to need two. So, I guess potentially here. Let's see if that works. Um, this guy's going to need three. Uh, oh, it's going to be a problem here, isn't it? How is this guy going to have anything? I don't get how this guy is going to have anything, because he's boxed in. That's strange. Anyway, let's... So that's not going to work, because he needs an extra one. So that will not work. Um, so let's think. I don't understand. Oh, wait, you can put... Hang on. Needs... Bugs of the same kind can share a box. Okay, so if that's the case then we could potentially do this. So can they share a box like that? Because that's a three, maybe. I don't know. Let's, let's try it, because then let's see if these guys can share a box, like this way, like that. Because um, the, Do they need an empty? Each needs two include. It doesn't say it needs an empty one. It just says it needs two including. Must be four-sided. Okay, so, I mean, potentially... Like that. But then, isn't the idea to do it with as few boxes as possible? Yeah. Oh, the fewest number of lines to draw a box possible. Okay. 
Um, I mean, I think that let's let's just see what happens with this. I'm guessing this is going to come up as being wrong, but we'll give it a go. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Remember, each type of bug needs it. It's allotted sp Okay, so maybe we were wrong in doing it like that. In which case, that's a bit weird. Because I'm guessing that the issue is, is that these guys haven't got... But that can't be right. That can't be right. Um... Let's think about this. So these ones are all fine. This one maybe not. But this... The problem is the one where there's two next to each other, right? Because there's no way that that guy is going to have three. And there's no way the one at the bottom is going to... It's going to have the space it needs so I'll tell you what let's reset it if we assume that each one even if it's in the same box still needs the space right so um, we could if they each need three let's start here so if we go it doesn't have to be directly next to it does it it's like, let's just, if we do this, he's got three, one, two, three, and then he's got, has he got three? One, two, three, four. Okay, let's just try that. Um, it's, yeah, it's the guys that are together, so they're going to need two spaces, so if we go to there... That gives them a space each, right? Which is good. Um, these guys are going to need... They're going to need to come down because of their requirements. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Uh, these guys could go in a box there because they've got their two. And then these guys have got two if they go here. So is... Is that right? One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. Potentially. Yeah, okay, nice. Not too bad. I'll take an excellent. All bugs safely corralled. Thanks, <laughs> Daryl. Thank you. <laughs> That's literally the worst explanation ever, but okay. Look at that! He did it! Yes. Now, will you answer my questions? Sure. Fire them at me. Uh, whoa. We've got a lot of questions. Factory. You two are employed at the factory. Would you say it's a safe place to work? As safe as any other place, I guess. Yeah, except the new wing is haunted. Hmm? No, it isn't. You better quit listening to those hippies. Why do you think the new wing is haunted? When the factory expanded, we built a new wing. A bunch of locals got angry we had to clear out part of the forest to do it. Because spirits live in the forest. Oh, spirits? You mentioned something about spirits in the forest. Really? Depends on who you ask. You won't see me out in the woods after sundown. Well, me neither, but there ain't no spirits. See, the other guy mentioned, the guy outside mentioned about not being out after sundown. It seems like a superstition going on in this place, doesn't it? Foreman. Do you guys know what happened to the foreman? Yeah, the lobster bit him. Shut lobster. up, Daryl. What do you mean, a lobster bit him? He means Mike Lobb. Oh. Mike and Isaac didn't get along all the time. Interesting. Had a little bit of a fight. That's because Isaac thought he was smarter than all of us floor guys. <laughs> Hell, he probably is. No, he ain't. Just because he's a college boy don't make him smart. Repairman? What do you know about the guy fixing the sign outside? Randall Scroffman. Weird guy. He thinks the trees talk to him. Yeah, but he sure picked the right line of work. He's going to be employed forever. Stuff always needs fixing. 
I think he looks extra hard for stuff to fix around here. <laughs> yeah, so he can be close to glory. Uh, She's the waitress here. I see. Sweeter than moose milk in the morning. Ugh, moose milk. Thanks, gentlemen. Anytime. All right, well, I mean, that went pretty well. Did we can still talk to them. There's nothing Thanks, else. gentlemen. Anytime. All right, let's see what uh, this guy's Hi, about. I'm Agent Tethers with the FBI. Uh, Sir, dude? you seem stressed. Do you know something about the factory you'd like to let me in on? I don't know anything. Sir, Lies. it's against the law to withhold information or lie to a federal agent. Yeah, I'm into some stuff. <laughs> Who are you? So, what's your name? Steve. Sir, I'm here about the factory. If you've got nothing to do with it, then however you spend your time doesn't concern me. Factory. There's nothing you can tell me about the factory. I don't co-mingle with the factory folk. You haven't heard about anything suspicious going on, have you? Nothing more than usual. All right, stuff. What stuff are you into? I airlift wooden gnomes out of Scoggins. Mm. Okay. That's a... The birds. To where? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> How? Black market trinket rings. Big money. Couldn't you just use the mail? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Loner Steve trains birds to transport freight. Tonight's shipment just departed, but Steve forgot to note the quantity. Can you determine the number of gnomes? Oh god, there's rules for this one as well. Each type of bird has a certain weight limit. Each bird shown is carrying the maximum amount it can. Birds may team up on heavy loads, each carrying what he can. Freight must be balanced evenly between a bird's two legs. Right, okay. Well, this sounds complicated. Um, each type of bird has a certain weight limit. Okay, so we'll need to know what each bird can do weight limit wise. Each bird shown is carrying the maximum amount it can. Okay. Birds may team up on heavy loads, so we can use more than one bird, but we still have to take into account their weight limit, and the freight has to be balanced evenly between a bird's two legs. Okay. Right. Let's, uh, let's have a look. How do we know... So how does this... Do we... I'm not really sure... What? I forgot to note the quantity. Can you determine the number of gnomes? Each type of bird has a certain weight limit. Each bird shown is carrying the maximum amount it can. Birds may team up on heavy loads. Okay. Oh, I see. So... The two legs have to have the same amount of weight on them. Oh, so these have got gnomes in, have they? Is that what's going on? So we have to, like, figure out what the weight... How many gnomes... So we've got... We know that there's five gnomes here. So... One, two, three... So there has to be... Does there have to be three gnomes in this one? I'm guessing. There would have to be three gnomes in this one, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm guessing there would have to be three gnomes in here. Would there? One, two, three. Two gnomes there. I don't. No, actually, there wouldn't necessarily. Uh, hang on, let's look at the rules again. Each bird is carrying the maximum amount it can. Birds may team up. Freight must be balanced evenly between a bird's two legs. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, sorry. Um, freight must be balanced evenly between a bird's two legs. So, I would guess this has to be three, because he's got three there. But can it... Hmm... Uh, but then does it split 
because they're both carrying the weight. Potentially. So then this bird would have to... So we need to work out what's here, right? So we need to work out what this would be. So if he's got three, then that would have to be split, right? So would that be... So he's got one per foot. <laughs> this is quite difficult. Um... This is actually really difficult. Let's think, let's think. So, he's got two. What? We've got to work out this one to work out the rest, right? So, could this be one? Tricky. <laughs> Let's look at the rules again. Each type of bird has a certain weight limit. Each bird shown is carrying the maximum amount it can. Okay. So... Birds may team up, each carrying what he can. So we need to figure out what bird can carry what. Freight must be balanced evenly between a bird's two legs. So... I guess this could be a one? Because then he's carrying one of it, he's carrying two. So then that would mean that there's two in here. So let's assume it's one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Or would that. fourteen? Is that right? I don't know, let's give it a go. I probably added it to wrong, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, okay. Alright. Fine. Um wasn't too difficult. Once I figured out what I was actually meant to be doing. <laughs> Fine. How? That's it. Okay. It's kind of annoying. It doesn't give you a proper explanation, though, for some of them. Another puzzle solved. All right, another puzzle solved. Well, we're out of time, so we will uh, talk to the sheriff and maybe this lady here in the next one. Maybe she's got a puzzle as well. I don't know. Um, yeah, I want to do all these optional puzzles if we can, but um, we'll see how we get on. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to our patrons: Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Tommy Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Kumadim, Paulione, Flossy the Sheep, John Com Five Five Five, Chrissy, and Paul James. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>